Medicine. They actually date back thousands of years, when primitive man used crude implements to cut holes in skulls to release evil spirits. Medical science has come a long way since then, and today's surgical tools are among its advancements. In the hands of a skilled surgeon, the right tool can be a lifesaver. There are now hundreds to choose from, each designed for a specific task or operation. Made of surgical-grade steel, which is extremely corrosion-resistant, they can withstand frequent cleaning and sterilizing. One of the more useful tools is a self-retaining retractor, which is used to pull back tissues or organs during surgery. Using a circular cutter, they round the profile of the tool's joint. This round joint allows the tool to open when the shanks are shut, the opposite of a pair of scissors. Next, cutters carve slots in two parts to create the retractor's intermeshing jaws. These jaws will be used to grasp and retract body tissue so the surgeon can operate. A technician sands the teeth down to a precise size. He must be accurate within a quarter of a millimeter. He then smooths the jaw's teeth against a fine grit wheel so they'll easily intermesh when needed. He rounds the tips of the teeth to make them blunt so they won't damage human tissue. He hammers back the tips of the teeth, giving them a claw-like profile. With the teeth now complete, attention returns to the round joint of the instrument. The carved slots and countersink allow the two sides to fit together perfectly. They install a part called the rack below the joint and file teeth into it. It will be used to lock the tool in an open position. After heat treatment, a worker sands all the tool components to smooth sharp edges. Vibrating porcelain chips and polishing compound scrub them clean and remove burrs caused by machining. Next, they install the pivot screw and trigger for the rack. By pressing it, the surgeon can open the prongs to the desired width and lock the tool in position. Production now moves to the surgical clamp. It's used to block the flow of blood during operations and has a more scissors-like joint, rectangular instead of round. Mechanized cutters carve the joint and catches. A worker forces the finger bows against a spinning grinding wheel to remove surface imperfections. Precision is again critical, as the worker grinds each of the tool's shanks to the correct thickness. He measures to confirm that the size is consistent along the length of the part. He then files the joints so they mate perfectly. He places the joint part of one of the shanks over hot coals to soften the metal and make it malleable. Then he forces a spike through a slit in the joint and the now compliant steel stretches to open the slit. The other shank now slides easily into the opening. He hammers the joint to close the opening and the two arms of the surgical clamp are now hinged together. Next, he files the teeth of the clamp so they'll interlock when the tool is closed. He bends the two ends around a tool to form the jaws of the clamp. These curved jaws will come in handy when the surgeon needs to reach around organs or bone. Next, using a variety of tools, he adjusts the shanks and the finger bows to give them a more ergonomic feel. This is called soft setting because at this point the metal is still soft enough to be manipulated. He tweaks the bend of the jaws until he's satisfied with the curvature. He smooths the inside of the finger bows with a fine abrasive belt. After heat treatment to strengthen the metal, they blast it with fine glass particles to give it a satin finish. They laser etch the company name and identifying numbers onto the surgical clamp. The numbers will allow the tool to be traced back to a particular production run. And now it's ready to take its place on the front lines of healthcare.